So this morning, I woke up to my national team, Italy, get knocked out of the Under-20 World Cup in Poland in the semi-finals. A bittersweet ending for the Azzurini after a very successful tournament, finishing top of their group, winning against hosts Poland with many bright moments from young talented prospects across the team. It's never been a more exciting time to be a fan of Italian football, or calcio, as we like to call it. Ukraine ended up defeating them 1-0, despite a late equaliser from Italy to send the game into extra time, it was controversially ruled out by VAR. From now, they'll go and face Ecuador's under-20s for a third-place finish, but nevertheless, it's a top-four World Cup finish for Italy, guaranteed. So just like the under-17s Netherlands video we did, I see this as an awesome chance to watch the under-20 Italians not only performing in real life, but also in FIFA 19 career mode, watching how they'd perform in an actual team, grow and develop after simulating a few seasons in career mode. Let's jump into the video. And just a disclaimer, some of the players that played in the under-20 side aren't added into FIFA as of yet. I'm sure they'll get added into FIFA 20, but obviously we can't use them in this team. But the majority of players are in the side this time, plus a few other under-20 Italian talent available to us as well. And for the purpose of this video, we've placed them all into Hellas Verona as they have just been promoted to Serie A after winning their playoff final against Cittadella. And of course, our manager name is Paolo Nicolato as he is the actual manager of this Italy under 20 side in the World Cup. We're trying to keep it as real as possible here. So we're going to get straight into the under 20 Italian side here. Just ignore all the players out on loan. We're obviously going to get rid of them throughout the course of the simulation, but we're going to start off with Italy's under 20 starting goalkeeper, AC Milan youngster, Alessandro Plizzari, the 18 year old keeper, has gotten a lot of AC Milan fans hyped. A possible heir to the throne of Donnarumma if he ever leaves. Plizzari has done really well in this tournament. He might go ahead and win Golden Glove, maybe a hot contender for it. But he is the starting goalkeeper for us. As everyone knows, he's got a mad potential in FIFA 19 and I'm sure he will fulfill it in this simulation. A young, solid keeper there to look forward to. We've added in Gasparini, who's been recently added in the past few weeks for FIFA 19. We just added him in there because he's a young keeper. He's under 16, so he could qualify for the under 17 team pretty much. But we've just added him in there for a backup keeper. Now we're moving on to the centre-backs. One of Italy's most famous positions, defending. It's pretty much Italy's bread and butter. It's what Italy are famous for. You think of famous Italian defenders, Baresi, Maldini. I could be here all day talking about them, Cannavaro. But there was one main defender that we couldn't add in, Gabbia, who's yet another AC Milan talent. He was loaned out to a Serie C team, so we couldn't add him in. But we have Luca Ranieri, who was actually in the under-20s team, 19 years of age, 62 overall. He actually looks quite decent in this side. And yeah, he's got some decent stats here in there. Stand tackle, balance but hopefully he can develop as well as Gabriele Corbo, who wasn't in the under-20 side, but he is going to join us here for this under-20 Italian team. He looks like yet another promising Italian defender there with some decent jumping. We're going to move on to Davide Bettella, the 18-year-old centre-back, 60 overall still. He was in the World Cup squad, and deservedly so. He's a very nice young talent to look forward to in the future. We move on to the left back, Alessandro Buongiorno, which means hello in Italian. Just a little fun fact for you guys. He was in the side. He wasn't the starting left back though as Luca Pellegrini, the Roma talent on loan at Cagliari this season in Serie A. He was our main starting left back in the squad. So Buongiorno is going to be a very good backup left back here. He will be starting for our squad as we move on to the wonder kid of FIFA 19, Sandro Tonali from Brescia. I know he wasn't in the under-20 attack team but we're going to use him here to help us develop this squad he is going to be playing in the under 21 euros and possibly being called up to the national team for some Euro 2020 qualifiers wasn't in the squad but he is definitely going to help us across this simulation Hopefully, we can see him grow and lead this team on to glory. But we're going to look forward to seeing him in the under-21 Euros this summer. As we move on to Mattia Viviani, yet another Brescia young talent, got promoted to Serie A this year. Looking forward to seeing these two in Serie A together. Wasn't caught up to the national team, surprisingly. But yet again, he's another under-20 young talent. We move on to Filippo Melegoni, yet another player who was surprisingly not called up to the team. He is definitely a great young prospect for the Italian midfield, but we move on to a player that had a really decent tournament. He scored the first goal for Italy against Mexico. It was a banger from outside the box. Davide Fratesi, who was out on loan at Ascoli this season in Serie B. He is currently owned by Sassuolo, so a Serie A team who could possibly 
playing him next season. He is a very decent anchor in the midfield, the kind of controller, the hard worker. The 18-year-old was definitely one of the leaders at the Under-20 World Cup. Had a great tournament, scored a few goals in there as well. So a very promising future for him. Hopefully we can see him in Serie A sooner rather than later. But we move on to Alessio Riccardi. This is a player that wasn't called up to the under-20 squad, but is an awesome Italian talent to use in FIFA 19 career mode. He was recently added into career mode in 2019, and I'm glad he did because he has got some awesome potential on the game. Yet another Roma talent for the Romans to look forward to. And we move on to Antonio Gallo, the versatile left-back defender, midfielder. He can play a few positions there, but for some reason, he didn't get called up to the national team either, as well as Gianluca Gaetano, a young, talented prospect from Napoli. The young under-20 talent. I mean, you can't call up everyone. Someone has to get left behind, but these are some great young talents. Not only used for the under-20 Italy squad, but just career mode in general. We move on to some more talent that wasn't called up for the under-20 squad, and that is going to be Emmanuel Vignato from Chievo Verona. He did well in the second half of the season for them. They were already relegated, so they gave him a few games. Vignato looks very decent, and I'm sure he'll have a good season next year as well. We move on to Enrico Brignola, former of Benevento. Now at Sassuolo. He didn't get caught up to the under 20 side as well so I was a bit surprised by that he might have been injured I do not know but another player that has been recently added the Italians have been treated well in FIFA 19 we've had a lot of young wonder kids being added into the game Roberto Piccoli is yet another one of them 64 overall they might have been a bit too young to take to the under 20 World Cup so I understand Kevin Canavo the 18 year old striker yet another one that was probably a bit too young he's got some decent stats in the physicals there but the rest of the stats need work maybe he'll get a bit of game time in Serie B next season, but we move on to Gianluca Scamacca, the kind of target man forward that was at the under-20 World Cup. He actually scored the goal that was disallowed in the semi-final. He looks to be a big presence up front, only 19 years of age. As we move on to Gabriele Gori, he was at the under-20 World Cup, didn't get too much game time, as you can tell, isn't really the best striker available. And we move on to a player that I added. We all know him. We all love him. Pietro Pellegri, a young Italian striker in this side, who for some reason wasn't at the under 20 world cup i do not know why we're going to move on to the star of this team the main man of this team do not get me started on this man inter primavera youth product he was on loan at frosinone my team in Serie A this season was definitely our best player scored a few Serie A goals got his Serie A debut at the club and looks to be a very young promising talent was the top goal scorer for the italy under 20 side at the world cup ended up getting four goals which is a very decent output for the young 19 year old andrea pinamonti remember the name guys he's going to be the next big thing in a Italian football has caught the eyes of many Italian clubs, of many Italian fans. He scored the little Penenka penalty against Poland to knock them out of the tournament. He's going from strength to strength. He's gotten a potential upgrade in career mode as well, so I'm looking forward to what the future holds for this guy. He's currently my favorite young Italian player. Maybe a little bit of bias because he played for my side. To the last few players, Pierini, who wasn't actually at the Under-20 World Cup. We've added him in. He's 19 years of age. And then Caponi and Antonucci from Pescara, especially Capone, who was in the side for the Under-20 World Cup. So we've got a very interesting, youthful squad here. I am so excited to see how they do, how they grow and develop, how they perform in Serie B and hopefully Serie A. This is how they line up. Pinamonti up top leading the line. Capone and Antonucci on the wing. The midfield three of Melegoni, Tonali the captain, and Fratesi the midfield anchor. The back four is going to be Luca Pellegrini. Buongiorno is going to play centre-back because he can actually play it. Ranieri is going to be his partner and Gallo as right-back because we currently have no right-back. So <laughs> he is going to be a makeshift right-back for us. Plizzardi obviously in net, all on the bench. The reserves are right there. This team's got a lot of promise, a lot of potential, a lot of growth to do over the course of this simulation. I'm loving it. We can play a game or two with them and see how they do. But we're going to simulate this first season in Serie B. We're going to see if they can get promoted, what they can do in the second division. I'm just over the moon with this squad as an Italian. It is a very exciting time. I am loving this under 20 Italian side. I wish they won the World Cup. But guys, if you do, go ahead and enjoy the video and a like in these young national team youth videos. 
videos, please make sure to leave a like. Comment down below on what national team I should do next. Follow me on Twitter. The link is in the description. Smash that subscribe button. We just reached 10,000 subscribers. Hit the notification bell so you never miss out on a video. And let's see how the under 20 Italians do. Season number one in Serie B. So at the end of season number one, it's a decent debut season in Italy's second division for the under 20s. They end up finishing in seventh in a playoff position, 50 points, which is pretty decent. Brescia and Cittadella go up with automatic promotion, but a playoff spot is very, very decent. They still had the chance to go to Serie A, but it looked like they lost the playoff final to Perugia, 3-1 on aggregate. They beat Palermo in the semi-final and they beat Venezia in the quarter-final. Very decent run from the under-20s. It's another season in Serie B. Another chance to grow and develop even further. And in the Coppa Italia, we got knocked out in round one. 3-1 to Serie A side Parma. So there's a bit of work to do there, but our main performance this season was Enrico Brignola with five goals, two assists. Capone got 11 goals, four assists. Tonali with six goals and three assists. Pinamonti was our joint top goal scorer there with 11 goals. Pellegri got five goals. Vignato got a bit of action in there as well. Meanwhile, overall growth is going through the roof. Plus fours to a lot of players there, you can see. And then plus threes keep on coming. It's a regular occurrence here for the young Italians. And a lot of players with a plus two, plus one. And the players that didn't grow were the players out on loan. That is a very successful season. The under-20s debut in Serie B, the playoff finalists. It's only going to go up from here. Let's see if they can get promoted in season two. So the end of season number two has dawned upon us and it's Frosinone and Spal gaining automatic promotion back to Serie A the first time of asking. We finish in fourth place. An improvement on seventh last season. We finish in a playoff spot again, 11 points higher than we finished last season. We end up losing to the in the final again, two years in a row, playoff finalists, and we lose 3-2 to Palermo on aggregate. Unlucky again for the under-20 Azzurri. We fall at the final hurdle yet again, which is pretty disappointing. And in the Coppa Italia, we improved upon last season round one exit. We ended up going all the way to the round of 16, only losing to Fiorentina 2-1. But our main performers this season, Plizzari with 13 clean sheets, Luca Pellegrini getting a few goals, Tonali with 5 goals and 4 assists, Brignola our top goal scorer with 13 goals and 5 assists, Capone with 10, Orbo getting a goal from centre back, Fratesi, Ranieri, Pinamonti getting 7 goals, Riccardi getting 4, Pellegrini getting 5 goals again, so a few goals here and there, but no standout, standout player. And of course the attribute and stats growth just keep on going up. Plus fours all across the board. Pinamonti with a big plus four. A lot of plus threes to Tonali. At least a plus two minimum. But plus four for a lot of our players here. Riccardi and Gori as well. So a very decent season in terms of growth. The side keep developing. They keep performing. I'm hopeful. I'm sure they're going to get promoted in season number three. Let's wait and see how they do. So it's taken us three seasons, but we have absolutely killed it here in season number three, winning the Serie B title, finishing in first, automatic promotion to Serie A, 80 points, which is a record for us, absolutely huge, finishing in second, 12 points behind us is Spezia, meanwhile Perugia, Brescia, Salerno, Pescara, Chievo Verona, and Lecce all finish in the playoffs. The big news here is that the U20s are finally into the big leagues, we're up with the big boys, we're going to be competing in Serie A for season number four, a lot to look forward to there. And in the Coppa Italia, we went one step closer to the final. Compared to last season, we got knocked out in the round of 16. This season, we made it to the quarterfinals, losing to Napoli 4-1. But we beat Serie A opposition, the likes of Atalanta. We beat La Spezia, who got promoted with us. And we also beat Genoa, who's a Serie A opposition as well. So, some promising signs from the young Azzurri. Now, this was the interesting part. Who were our star performers in our road to Serie A? In our promotion campaign, Christian Capone got most appearances there with 12 goals, 7 assists. Donali, the captain, with 2 goals. But our top goal scorer, my man, Andrea Pinamonti, killing it here with the under 20s 21 goals for him our main marksman this season firing us up into the big leagues meanwhile last season star Brignola doing all right there we get Fratesi also contributing a lot Melagioni did all right for the game time he got Pellegrini also Riccardi doing well Pellegri with four goals not our main striker but still doing all right and we move on to the most important thing growth there were no plus fours this year but it seems like all over the board we got plus threes for a lot of our players plus two was the minimum yet again but we still ended up getting a few plus ones to Pierini and Buongiorno it'll be interesting
interesting to see if they can survive in Serie A. Can they compete? Can this side survive and become a staple in Serie A? We're only going to find out, but... There's going to be a big season ahead for the under-20s. So the Italian Stallions debut season in Serie A, season number four. Let's see where they finish. They're not in the top 10. Inter finishing in 12th. Fiorentina finishing in 13th. Empoli in 15th. Genoa in 6th. Oh, no. We're in the bottom four. This cannot be good. We'll just scroll down now. Oh, wow. We've finished one place above the drop. Six points above Lecce. Been promoted in real life, but they go back down to Serie B as well as La Spezia and Frosinone back to Serie B. But we survive by six points. The skim of our teeth, Genoa as well, the same points as us. That was the goal this season, to survive Serie A, to survive in the top division of Italian football. And that's exactly what the young Italians have done. In the Coppa Italia, we got knocked out in round 16 to Inter Milan 1-0. Our main performers this season, Mirko Antonucci getting three goals, six assists, Capone getting seven and six as well. We go down to Tonali with four goals and three assists, Pinamonti with 10 goals in Serie A, double figures for him, and Brignola gets five goals. Not too many top scorers, Fratesi getting five as well, Riccardi with two. As we are in Serie A now, it's a bit tougher for them, but Gaetano with four goals, Vignato Viviani getting in amongst the act, but that is a decent showing from the lads. And the big growers this season, plus three for a few players, Pellegrini getting in there as well, but a lot of plus twos to go around. I'm assuming there are a few plus ones, yeah, with Plizzardi, a few of the players with a plus one, but still, it's growth all over the park here for the Italian Stallions. We're gonna go one more season and see if they can survive two years in a row. Maybe make a little cup run and then play a little game with them. Why not? Let's see how Nicolato and the Italians do. All right, season number five. I see you, Azzurri. Finishing in mid-table. That is a massive improvement from 17th, six points away from relegation last season. We're up here with the big boys. We're above Inter. We're above Atalanta. We're with Sampdoria and Roma. This, what a season from the lads. Smack bang in the middle of Serie A. It ended up being Juventus. Juventus winning it, smashing the competition there with 94 points. And then it was Empoli, Pescara and Spal all going back to Serie B. And to top off a record season in Serie A, the Italian Stallions have made it all the way to the final of the Coppa Italia. Again, Scudetto winners this season, Juventus. We beat AC Milan in the semi-final, 2-1 on that group. We beat Napoli 5-4 on penalties after it was 2-2. Who did we face in the round of 16? It was Lazio we beat 2-1. Wow, what a Coppa Italia campaign. We've got a game to look forward to here. We can play and hopefully win some silverware with the under 20s. So let's see who our main protagonists were this season. In our 10th place finish and Coppa Italia final, we had Capone with six goals, four assists. Tonali with five goals, four assists. Plizzari getting 13 clean sheets. Brignola with 13 goals. Pellegrini's injured for the final. Pinamonti, our top goal scorer with 16. Cannot wait to use him now at an 85 overall. We're gonna scroll down. Antonucci is injured for the final as well. Very unlucky for him. Pellegri is going to get seven goals and two assists, so a decent season from him. Piccoli as well, getting in on the scoring with six goals. And the player growth here, three for Gaetano, three for Pinamonti. Growth across the park, pretty much plus two to everyone besides these bottom few with plus one, but still a lot of growth. And the future of Italy is looking very bright. Two 85 rated players. We have six players in the 80s here. What a side we have on our hands here. This is how they're going to line up for the Coppa Italia final up against Juventus. A lot of our players are injured slash very fatigued. So we had to move a few things around here. Let's get into the Coppa Italia final against Juve. So here we are at the Olimpico. Juventus fans are out in force. The Verona fans are out in force cheering for the under-20 Azzurri. Let's see how they do five seasons into FIFA 19 career mode. Juventus's team is absolutely insane, by the way. And our cup run has been nothing short of a miracle. But let's see how it all plays out here at the Olympico. It doesn't get bigger than this. Silverware on the line. Hopefully, we can bring it home. We did it against Lazio. This is Juventus' side. I mean, Bala, Bentekurd, Varane at the back as well. Mendy, Cancelo, Perrin. they got Bernadeschi on the bench. Look at their bench. Their bench has got so many good players on it. Khan in the midfield as well. So, we're up against it today. Hopefully, that man Tonali can lead us to glory. Juventus are going to kick us off here. Doing well in the early stages. Brignola finds Pinamonti. 
Pinamonti can see. Brignola in the box. Brignola nearly gets to it. Pinamonti can find him again. Beautiful ball. He's going to cut back inside. Is there anyone lurking around the area? Brignola's shot just goes out for a corner. Come on, there's three players on him. How's that? That's the softest penalty, man. You're kidding me. Three players on him and they couldn't even tackle him. Look at this. Look at it. What? You're kidding me, ref. The refs have done us there. Come on, Plitzari against Paolo Dybala. Where's he going? He's gone left. Oh, oh, it's off the post as well. And we can see the opener. Juventus haven't had a sniff this whole game. And that's the softest penalty to give away. And Dybala makes no mistake. Oh, Otonali wins it back. Tonali, get there, finish, pair in with a big save, and no one can follow it up. It's going to be Tonali to crack one. And Perrin was comfortable with that. Tezzi finds Pinamonti. What a header. Pinamonti's made his way into the box. Pinamonti! And they've caught for half time. You're kidding me. As soon as we win the ball back. But we've been playing well. It's just a dodgy Juventus penalty. We're going to try in the second half and get this game back on track. Enter the box here on kickoff. He's going to pull it back for Brignola, and it's deflected again. Back to Brignola. You can see Gallo making a decent little run. Gallo's going to shift that one in. Pinamonti's there and that's the equalizer. What a passage of play. What a counterattack from the Italian Stallions. And we are back in this one. 54th minute Pinamonti equalizer. Get that in your Juventus. The number 89, our main man, our marksman this season. Brignola found the runner Gallo and a beautiful timed cross into Pinamonti and he put that one into the bottom left Perin flaps at it could not do much about that gets in between the two defenders and has that instinct for goal Pinamonti ever so reliable up top and it's 1-1 Monti get another header Perin heads that one out it's back to Brignola Tonali's gonna strike it on the volley crosses that one in no no way no way, no way! Plitzari with a massive one-on-one -on -one save there to keep us in it. Back in, Tonali, Pinamonti, back to Fratesi, finds Brignola, and what a save from Perrin to keep it at 1-1. This game is absolutely insane at the moment. Gallo finds Pinamonti, and it's deflected into the path of Perrin. And there we go, extra time is needed to separate us from Juventus. No, Orsolini, big cross in the box. We need Skamaka to connect with this. We all know he has the power header trait. Skamaka! Perrin saves us from a last minute winner. The boys have put an absolute shift in. Look at that, dominating Juventus on the counter. 43% possession, 15 shots, 10 on target. Still one goal. Now it all comes down to this, a penalty shootout against Juventus. He's going left. He's going left. Big save from Plizzari. That's what we want to see. Now Tonali's got to follow it up. Come on. Low and hard. Low and hard. No. This could turn really bad. But Plizzari with another save. Get in, boys. Plizzari. Come on, Pinamonti. Don't let me down. Mr. Frosinone. Come on. That's what we want to see. Pinamonti, the man who scored the header in the game, gets the penalty as well. Now it's going to be Sarabia. He's going left. No, he's going right. Oh, I... Capone. Capone slots that one away. We go 2 1 up now. Emre Jean, the German. Where is he going left? Oh, he goes right. Now, Viviani, our makeshift center back for this game, has done extremely well and he converts the penalty comfortably there. Blitzardi. Orsolini is up now. He's going right. Oh, he goes left. And that's from him as well. Pietro Pellegri. The ex-Genoa man can surely convert this one. And it's bottom corner. And that's the win, I realize. But the under-20 World Cup Azzurri do it here against Juventus in the Coppa Italia final. What a season. What a match. Of course, it went to penalties. What a performance from Plizzari in net. And Pietro Pellegri finishes it off here. Done it at the Stadio Olimpico. No better place to do it. And we are going to be celebrating all night now because the Italian Stallions have done it here. What a video, guys. If you did enjoy it, make sure to slap a like button. Sign these guys up in Karimo. They are absolutely beast follow me on twitter the link is in the description subscribe down below so for some more fifa content on the channel click the notification bell all that good stuff comment down below who your favorite player was in this under 20s team i've been bchd thank you so much for watching and i'm gonna leave you with captain tonali lifting up the trophy is this
project my love moving slow Frozen to these pieces without a show